Disclaimer. The information and education material contained herein is meant to promote the general understanding and dialogue of GANS processing. Such information is not meant or intended to serve as a substitute for a healthcare professional's clinical training, experience, or judgment. For patients and individuals, such information is not to be a substitute for professional medical, therapeutic, or healthcare advice or counseling. For medical issues or concerns, including decisions about medications and other treatments, readers, viewers, listeners should always consult their physician or, in serious cases, seek immediate assistance from emergency personnel. Prescription information, procedures, and use of medical devices information should be undertaken only by properly trained and certified medical personnel. We specifically disclaim any warranties, express or implied, including implied warranties of merchantability or fitness for a particular purpose. Such information is provided, as is, and is believed to be accurate at the time of its publishing, but it is the viewer's job to evaluate the accuracy of any information found in this presentation. Every case presented is of their own experience, applied by themselves for themselves and it applies to their case only. Every person experiencing health problems should seek professional medical advice and consult their course of treatment with a doctor. The processes of plasma balancing described herein, are a natural process which supports the body but does not replace medical advice or therapies one is already subject to. From the beginning of time, humans have always looked towards the sky for inspiration and guidance. There has been a fascination with birds, stars, gods, goddesses and other entities which seem to exist above us, and for many humans, a strong yearning to travel into space. Man has dreamt of flight since observing space and now it is time to become the space traveller. The future of space travel requires us to understand from where we came, to see where we are going. Several thousand years ago, philosophers Mosey and Lu Ban from China were looking to the wind for flight. They invented kites using silk and bamboo, allowing for the later development of communication, measuring distances, testing the wind, and lifting men. The invention of the kite brought with it the desire to fly. The first known attempts at flight were typically by leaping off towers, known as tower jumping, People in China, India and Europe first attempted flight this way. In 1670, Francesco Lana de Tarzi published a book that showed some interesting concepts. The concept of copper foil in a sphere with a vacuum would produce a vacuum airship. This is still not possible with today's materials. Francesco is recognized as the father of aeronautics, melding science and mathematics into aerial navigation. The Chinese are believed to have developed the first hot air device. The Chinese lantern using hot air from a candle can take flight and was first used for signalling. The hot air balloon achieved the first human lift and advanced to what we know of as the Zeppelin. The first attempts at flight in a heavier than air flying machine were made by more than just the Wright brothers. Most attempts failed, however they were the stepping stones for what was to come later. The oldest airport, College Park is still in operation today. Airplanes evolved rapidly through the century, from propeller to helicopter to jet aircraft, and most of that technology is used today. During the Second World War, Germany developed rockets that could go a limited distance. The basic rocket technology used then is still used today. The space race started with the Soviet Union and the USA in 1957 and led to many developments for the next step, the Moon. The spacecraft assigned as Apollo 11 was the first spacecraft to have landed on the Moon. The space shuttle operated at tremendous cost, burning the fuel proved to be wasteful and dangerous technology. The International Space Station, ISS, is a habitable artificial satellite 
that was assembled in low Earth orbit in 1998 with the use of the Space Shuttle, the ISS, can often be seen with the naked eye from Earth. SpaceX, as a private aerospace producer and space transportation services company, was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk with the goal of reducing space transportation costs and enabling the colonization of Mars. SpaceX reuses the first stage of their primary rocket, Falcon 9, by vertical propulsive landings. Although, up to present time, it still uses the rocket fuel burning technology. Mehran Kesh has always said, the time for burning fuels is over, but did we need to start with that technology in the first place? Ancient cultures have suggested the use of an alternative means of transportation. With reference to possible plasma technology, you can go to New York from Brussels within two to five minutes. And most of this five minutes is actually uh, landing and getting up. Mehran Tabakali Kesh was born in Iran in 1958. As the son of an X-ray engineer, he was introduced to the world of radiation and nuclear science at a very young age. In 1981, he graduated from Queen Mary, the University of London, as a nuclear engineer specialized in reactor technology system control. At that time, he developed a number of theoretical ideas related to more simple nuclear concepts and their applications. In 2002, he decided to finish the full design of his ideas about nuclear technology. This included the creation and control of gravity and energy by the use of nuclear materials in a clean and safe hydrogen reactor. Mehran Kesh introduced the concept of double magnetic fields to explain the magnetic and gravitational field of Earth. Unknown by the existing scientific community, he wrote a number of scientific papers in 2004 and sent them for peer review, such as the creation of black holes. When one of the persons performing the peer review used his information in public, he decided to draw back his papers and to concentrate further on building prototypes. Since the beginning of 2006, Several prototypes of dynamic reactors have been built, some specifically designed to create hovering effects, similar to effects seen with magnetic levitation. Basic hovering effects have been achieved. 2007 brought the first flight test with radioactive material in which the patents describe the process of the field interactions. The main patent, gravitational and energy system, described the initial fundamental aspects of the plasma and uses. This was followed by the supplemental patent, Microplasma Reactors, where further uses and advancements were described. Mr. Kesh found himself in Iran in 2008 and was provided all the resources needed to create the first lift of a plasma reactor managed by the Iranian government. These special rotating gas reactors were used to control the plasma. To bring a deeper understanding, Mr. Kesh released the first book in 2009, The Universal Order of Creation of Matters, which contained many new concepts released to the public. This included the PMTIC plasma magnetic fields, initial fundamental plasma and plasma dilution technology used for space reactors. The plasma technology was further developed and it manifested in weight fluctuation in a controlled environment. 2010 introduced a new state of matter called GANS, an acronym for gas in nanosolid state. The GANS produces fields to be used in the operation of the spaceship. Advanced flight tests were performed in Iran with the guidance of Mr. Kesh and the newly designed systems. Mr. Kesh tells us you can't bring all the doctors with you in space. Medical research advanced in 2010 and is still being explored daily all around the world. The Cash Foundation has provided knowledge for dealing with many medical conditions in space. A great example of plasma technology used for peaceful process is the capturing of the USA drone over Iran in December 2011. This drone was touted as one of the most advanced drones of its day and was caught by Iran using plasma to disrupt the communications. 
plasma absorbs fields and the drone uses radio fields for piloting, a natural aspect of the plasma, a barrier of fields. Book two, The Structure of the Light, was released in 2011. This book brought forward the understanding of the structure of light as a cylindrical plasma where the light is in possession of all magnetic field strengths. Book three, The Origin of the Universe, was published later in 2011. Mr. Cash explained the further operation and interaction of different strengths of the same fields, which then leads to the creation of the universe. These three books bring forward a much deeper understanding of the plasma science that is applied worldwide by knowledge seekers and scientists in spaceship research and development. There were two conferences to release the space technology to governments in 2012. The first international presentation in April, Keshe Foundation invited representatives of every country to the first presentation of the plasma technology. The second international presentation in September, Keshe Foundation invited the nations of the world through their ambassadors and their leaders to attend a gathering at the Keshe Foundation Centre in Nenov, Belgium. Space travel requires peace. The implementation of the plasma technology brings greater responsibility. In 2013, Mr. Cash brought forward the World Peace Treaty. Signing of the peace treaty is a confirmation from yourself to your soul to act correctly in a peaceful manner. In 2014, knowledge seekers came together from around the world to learn from Mr. Cash and many different experiments with reactors were performed, including improving the previously developed reactors to fit with the new knowledge, introduction of nano-coated reactors, multi-core GANS systems. The Spaceship Institute lab experiments were streamed live on the internet for all to see. SSI lab tests with reactors showed strong magnetic field pulses up to 129 Tesla and showed significant weight fluctuations. In December, an experiment was performed using reactors built by knowledge seekers from around the world. Italy, Germany and Canada were involved in field communication tests. The tests showed that fields can interact with each other no matter the distance or time, resulting in instant communication. In 2015, developments for space continued with different aspects of the plasma technology, such as in health, energy, and decontamination. In October of 2015, Mr. Kesh taught a popular week-long course called the Blueprint Teachings about how to build the Magrav power units. People from all over the world participated with building their own Magrav units and teaching others. With the demand of the Cash Foundation products from all over the world, a new research center and manufacturing opened in Arizona, USA. Many developments of the technology happened in different parts of the world, and Cash Foundation USA is no exception. John and the team started performing experiments using different sensing tools. These tools allowed the team to visualize the MoGrav fields and to show others their interactions. With reactor formations showing positive results, partaking in the knowledge together is easier and more joyful than ever. The fun has just begun, says M.T. Kesh. Mr. Kesh publicly teaches the space technology through the weekly Knowledge Seekers workshops. Plasma enthusiasts from around the world participate in gathering the knowledge and putting the puzzle together in the space race. All people, irrespective of race, nation or religion, are invited to participate in the exchange of knowledge, thus assisting humanity to live within the ethos of the universe. It is recognized that international cooperation and peace is a prerequisite for mankind to journey into deep space. Individuals and nations are invited to come together in the spirit of collaboration and unity to enable peaceful application and the use of plasma technology for space travel, food, agriculture, energy, transportation, health and more. We are excited to release the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Blueprint to humanity.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 479th Knowledge Seekers Workshop here on Thursday, March 30th, 2023. This is a broadcast of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute Education Department and part of the public teachings in English. My name's Rick Cremond, and I'll be host once again in these weekly Knowledge Seekers Workshops going continuously for approximately 10 years here now. And of course, for continuously for every single workshop, we have Mr. Mayran Cash here, available to uh, deliver today's uh, teaching and information from the Cash Foundation. Hello, Mr. Cash, could you take it away, please? Yes, good morning, good day to you, as usual wherever and whenever you listen to this series of Knowledge Seekers of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute, where you will welcome you back to another gathering of what I call new scientists, new generation of uh, knowledge seekers of the universe and physicality of the man. Uh, we have been teaching for past weeks and months about the cosmic rays, about interaction and condition and the direction, how man will travel, how man has found a new way to understand how man leaps from being a physical passenger of the universe to be as part of its structure, for being a passenger of the fields of the universe. To get to know this, to become master in it, takes a long, long time. But somewhere, somehow, we have to start. Somehow, we have to take the first, what I call, toddling steps. Maybe the first steps of crawling towards the knowledge, towards the understanding. And this has been and will be one of the biggest dilemma for the man of science, not only on this planet, but across the universe. We don't have universities, we don't have what called graduations and the hat on the head to show we understood. The hat on the head comes from enlightenment in the world of the creation. And we have to understand how, where, the way, and the condition created that how, the where and the when to be created, and what you'll get out of it, what do you expect out of it. As I said many times, and you will come to understand that the time will come very soon when by dropping a drop in the fish tank, you will create that fish. And you will see man in control of a drop of energy, not a drop of water in a tank, creates a condition of life. That tank could be a fish tank, could be a planet, could be a universe. It's man who decides where that drop of energy will manifest itself, will take shape itself, will bring a new condition of understanding. And with it, it will bring a new era, in the world of the science of the universe, not in the world of physicality of the man. Those who understood a little bit about the operation and then things necessary to be the basic fundamental life of the man in the universe, they call themselves prophets and they prophesize. And those who have used a prophecy create a condition for their lack of knowledge of the true prophecy to be used a man. The way we have taught you, as knowledge seekers, you never prophesize, but you look into, you understand what it means, what is being said. How does it fit in the interaction of the fields? How does it fit in bringing the reality together? The reality of the two dimension of life, the physicality and energy as a plasma. 
even though the physicality itself is part of the spectrum of that energy. What happened to us? How do we change clothes? We wear a swimwear and we jump into the pool. We wear the soul of the man and we jump in the ocean of the universe. But the biggest fear of man is, how can he jump out and have the physicality when he comes out of the ocean of the fields of the universe? This is the biggest dilemma for man. How, the way, I should, I should not, should I? Would I become, can I come back? These are all the questions which we said. Yesterday, one of the fly tests, we tested this, in a very amazing way, but the knowledge seekers who participates in this kind of test with us, did not understand, could not comprehend what was going on. Still looking in the dimension of physicality, he looked at, I'm not there, I can get there. We could isolate the soul of the man from the fields of the universe. I don't feel anything, he says. Nothing happened. Yes, because you're isolated. It's a condition when you come in, nothing happens to convert yourself in the dimension of physicality because we blocked you, you're there. Moving the system instantly to another position combination, I can see the fields rotating in a clockwise direction. This is the time that you travel and you still have not understood, because the clockwise rotation means to man departure. You call it magnetical. In the field combination of the magraphs, you talk about clockwise or anti-clockwise. And then we change the combination again. And it says, I can go, I can feel energy is there for me to go. But, the but was to connect to the first setting of the dimension of physicality once you arrive. This is part of the knowledge which is missing. This is part of the knowledge which we have not shared and takes the man of wisdom to understand. How do you jump from the physicality of the man in the pool of the universe, and then how do you jump from the pool of the universe into the physicality of the man? We tested you, we brought you into the systems, we taught you how to come for a food, how to talk to the world leaders, and every gimmick possible. We have brought you out to teach you, you can go back, you can get in touch with, you can use the dimension of the field of the universe. Now the game starts in the coming time to take that ambiguity, that lack of knowledge which man has, how to go back from that dimension of the energy into the dimension of physicality. In fact, your soul does this at the point of death. It leaves the physicality of the man. And instantaneously, his position in the universe is dictated. It doesn't wander around, I'm a wanderer, to find myself, to find my soul, to find where I'm going to be. It arrives instantaneously at the point and the destination which has been created for it. So, man doesn't become a nomad in the dimension of the universe and the unicos. This is instantaneous. But, reaching to the point of the balance of the field of the plasma of the soul of the man, and in the dimension and position of the universe, then the soul has to create dimension of physicality. It's no good just standing there on your own, you're trying to tell the others, I'm here, I'm trying to create a new dimension. The soul of the man at that point of arrival, starts absorbing and creating the dimension of the inertia, of the patterns of the fields of the universe, to start beginning of a star. A beginning of a galaxy, a beginning of the universe. Not all souls of the man, will end up in a galaxy, or end up in the universe. Some of the souls of the man, become the beginning and the start of the universe. 
They are so pure. And they are to the, what we call level of understanding the process of the creation, that they become the creator of a new cycle. And this is what man needs to understand. You come from the energy, and how do you start that new cycle? How do you begin to begin a new cycle of life, a new solar system, a new galaxy, a new universe? Even maybe to become part of the Creator's fields of the creation, from the point of nearness to the Creator. Mankind needs to understand this point. And then, ask yourself one question. If my soul, at the moment of the departure from my dimension of physicality, knows his place, and then knows how to convert itself to the dimension of physicality at a given point in time and position, what have I not understood? What am I missing in the knowledge of the creation, in the wisdom of the man? If my soul knows its position at the point of departure and is starting a new life, maybe in the dimension of physicality, instantaneous as a seed of a star, that it gives a dimension of the tangibility, what am I afraid of? What am I worried about? When I go, when my emotion and feeling is to go from New York to London, why am I afraid to leave New York? Do you sit on the stairs before you get into a car? Am I going to get to London? When you get in the car, you go to the airport, do you sit and say, shall I get a plane? Would I end up in London? When you get on the plane and you go to the direction of London, would I arrive in London? And then, you land, and you walk, and you go out of the airport, you get a kiss and a cuddle from your family, and the friends say, Oh, I arrived. The system worked. It brought me in a little, what I call, tin box, to London. And I trust that. But, man does not trust his own existence. Never question, would I arrive? Your question is, what can I give when I arrive? Then you arrive. As long as it's me, can I confirm I can get to? You never leave because you're not, you're not even sure you can go. Where do you want to go to start with? The lack of trust. Lack of understanding. Lack of not knowing, how come my soul knows where to go, when it leaves my physicality. But, I don't know where I'm going to go, when I become, what I call, the passenger of my soul. As long as I want to stay in dimension of physicality. This is where, and this is the reason we brought the teachings. This is one of the main reasons we start this playing the tiptoe on the 16th of December we go and see the Creator. I put my foot out, see if it's warm enough, if it's real. In January I go and do that. In February I test if I can feed myself. In March, I can see if I'm equal to the world leaders, then I don't need to worry. When I become the soul of manifestation of my physicality, I can be the king of the kingdom of myself. Next session in April, I want to see if I can addict it to move. The reason we put the addiction is not for your alcohol, your drugs or sex. The reason we put the session of the addiction in April is that you don't get addicted to wanting to go in the dimension of the soul. 
I go there, I go there. I do this and I do that. There is something missing. I haven't been there. In a way, we don't create Aza number two. She wants to go everywhere around the world, test every condition of the emotion with every tool possible and every plant and everything else that to find myself. If I can control it. The reason for this is because traveling the span of your universe and knowing the capabilities you have, is addictive. And its addiction is uncurable, because you feel the love of the Creator. And like one in love, do not know where to go. The reason we put the addiction session is partially for you to understand the sincerity and the commitment of your soul, of physicality to your soul that I stay put, I am one, and I stay as one. Then you understand how the process of the creation brings you to stability. Brings you to the point, not to be addicted, but to be connected. For you to learn the energy releases, which brings elevation and excitement to the dimension of the soul, moving from physicality to the soul, moving from one to another, being part of the same thing. So, what we taught and what we showed from the beginning comes into operation. And, in a way, mankind comes to understand what I need to do. Do I, can I travel in the dimension of the soul, create the dimension of the physicality, and then can I depart with that soul? Would I be able to carry the, what we call, connection of my soul on this cycle of life? The biggest fear, the biggest uncertainty for man is that if he can carry his soul on a bandwidth, on a track of hydrogen and carbon-14. Would the soul of the man go to that dimension? Would the soul of the man learn how to add dimension of other materials, magnetic field strength, to manifest itself as a drop of rain, as a cloud, as a physicality of a plant, a creation in the dimension of the Creator, and be able at the same time to join back and travel the span of the universe. Then, would it be possible for man to learn the dimension of the carbon-14? If man understands how to operate within the dimension of the carbon, which in a way is the physicality manifestation of the fields and not rays of the universe, then man will go one step further. In a way, if you go back to the teaching of the past, we always said, you start with a ray. Interaction of the ray with their own creator fields. And then, the interaction of the fields with themselves creates a matter of states, be it the carbon, be it the copper, be it gold. And then, interaction of these fields by themselves, within themselves, creates a cycle of life. So, he started from a ray to a plasma, to physics, to chemistry, biology, and the energy called the soul of the man, which in that position, due to interaction of itself, by itself, and expansion of totality, becomes another ball of plasma, we call a soul. And then the cycle begins again. I am the beginning, I am the end.
raise a meter from a plasma will start the same cycle again till it goes back to the beginning that in interaction with itself will start creating a plasma and a plasma to another point to another point and back again. This is a cycle of creation. This is a way the creation is made. But at all time within this field is the essence of origin. What we call zero point. What we call the creator. This is one of the biggest questions I put to many scientists of cosmology and to the nuclear physicists years and years ago. And I explained this in the teaching a few times. In the world of the science of man today, we call it the North Pole and the South. We say the magnetic field come in and then they go out. Where do they change from? gravitational to magnetic. In fact, it never change. It's a continuous cycle. It's the point of observing. Point of observation. And this process is where you as a knowledge seekers have to come to understand. What happened at a given point of the observation and who can explain it does not become a problem. Or who can see the point of interaction, cannot use it to be used to others, because I can see how, and they can't, so I prophesize what I see. But in fact, I'm the observer, because I know a little bit more, I don't become a prophet. The game of the knowledge is not to be a magician, not to be a prophet. The game of the knowledge is to share that more people understand that from them, in the interaction of the fields of the universe, somewhere you get prophesized by the others. That what they prophesy, what the knowledge means. If man understand this, man will accept no prophets anywhere, no magicians in any position, dimension in the universe. Because man will look for the field interaction, man will look for the point of life and what it means. And how does it mean? And what does it create? How would it affect me? That I understand, that I don't accept no magician. Because I know the game of the magic. I know what I need to mix, how to mix it, understand it, and then I become the magician. And then, the actual truth is, I cannot be magic, because I am part of the circle of the magician, understanding the work of the universe. If, as knowledge seekers, you understand this, you have cracked it. You have completed the cycle. And then you look for the time, position, field, strength, dimension, and interaction. Then you understand, there was no need for prophecy. You have to understand, a certain point of the interaction, a certain point of evolution, interactions creates emotion. And then to understand, the emotion becomes the controller of the interaction, the controller of what's going to happen to the soul. I made man in the image of myself. How can Man has emotions, but not the Creator. As the Creator created that emotion for the man to understand. Your image of the totality. But the question to ask for you, did the emotion of Creator was with me, within the cycle of hydrogen? That in this point, I feel part of it. I call it love, I call it pain. But, 
but other parts of this emotion which I don't have privilege to still to come to me to become part of my knowledge. As I said many times, man will come to understand new emotions, but these emotions are not something new. It comes as part of the, I made man in the image of myself. You carry my emotion. And you only understand emotion and you arrive at it. It's no use to tell a six month old child, a two month old child, a ten-year-old child about a way a man and a woman fall in love and they give their life to be with their lover. Because it's not mature yet to understand what that means. To him is the love of mom, dad, maybe brothers, maybe a cat. How much I love. But the essence of a love changes when it comes to a lover to another partner. In a way, man has to learn to fall in love with the Creator. And then man matures, because then he gives that as he receives. Then it becomes enlightened with the knowledge of the emotion of the Creator. What do you call Mitra? The knowledge of falling in love, that you give everything for the lover to understand how much you love, but in a way, if the lover denies you, ignores you, you have received no love. You have not done anything you have added, but you never received to be elevated. Then it means for man to understand, what have I not given to receive? That elevation. Where? Where am I looking? What have I made a mistake in understanding? Because then I can show it in the dimension of physicality. I tell you, I love you, but you don't understand. I buy your red rose, I buy your box of chocolate to show the love, I buy you what you love, you enjoy, to show you how much I love you. How many times you have given a gift to the lover, and just puts it on the table, and somewhere else. You say, why have I done all this for? When the love is not appreciated, when not understood, I put every effort, I've traveled half of the town to find the color he likes, but to him, it's another piece, because he loves somewhere else. The work, the job, the football and the rest is more important that moment that when he gave the dimension of physicality of the rose or the box of chocolate. Because the emotion wasn't transferred, it just received. As I said recently to a diplomat in the past few days, Keshe Foundation brings the love of knowledge, is the responsibility of your leader to create the love of peace, with the knowledge we give as a love. The diplomat, a woman, looked in my eyes, said, Mr. Keshe, I don't understand. I said, you'll never understand. Because you've never been in love with peace. You're a diplomat. You're just an ambassador. because you haven't got the essence of the leader. You're on the paper a name, but not in the emotion. This is what you as knowledge seekers have to understand. The essence, but how do you call, how does the emotion is transferred in the universe? I can smell, you call it the odor, but how do I measure emotion? How do I feel the emotion? I'm a soul, I'm a pack of energy. How do I feel an emotion when I come across another soul in the dimension of the universe? If he loves me, 
he wants my energies, he wants part of my fields, he wants to give me something, he wants nothing. He wants to be loved. As I said to a friend of mine very recently, would the men of the universe become the Muslims of the universe? Four wives and forty lovers. Or man learns to be in the dimension of one soul, one life. You know the rules of Mahabharat. If you are away from your wife, so many lengths, so many kilometers, and you have to stay away for one night or more, you can take a part-time life, a part-time wife, but that night you are away. What would your soul do when he leaves you? In soul, as you call it, into the dimension of another universe. It's too far, you allow 200 wives and 2,000 partners. Even though you can come back instantaneously. The law comes to how long you want to stay away. Doesn't matter what the distance is. I used to joke with this, with my ex-wife. I used to travel a lot, when the children were young. But, I used to travel back to Manchester every night, and take a flight again tomorrow morning to go. And I used to tell her, I should have become a very good Muslim. Because it's nearly 500 kilometers, and more than, I think it's about 40 kilometers, you can take a wife. Multiply the number of distances, I can take 10 wives in one night, part time till I come back tomorrow, and I can extend it because it's too. But now we have planes and jet planes and whatever, and we cover the distance. Now, automatically, part of what was prophesied as a prophet becomes through the knowledge and technology obsolete. So it will be the same with a man in the dimension of the space of the universe. There is no time and space. And you live a life through the dimension of the life of Mitra. Does not matter what the distance from the Creator is, as the distance is the love of the Creator, which is zero time and place and position. You are never away, you are never far, and you cannot travel to the either side of the universe, as the universe is you. Then it comes, how come up to now, we have never understood the fact, the emotion, the way the emotion travels. We smell it as an odor, but we cannot feel it as an emotion. Where does the emotion of the Creator hide in? That it manifests in us, and at the same time within our children. How do we, transfer the color of the eye, the behavior and emotion to our child. Isn't this what the Creator has done with us? And we have adapted it to suit us? How did the emotion of the Creator arrive with us, within our soul, within our existence, on the, what are called, super highway of the hydrogen? Then it comes to a bigger question. Is there a dimension of the field, which man up to now have not understood? And is that the piece missing from man creation in the dimension of the, what I call plasma of the soul, or dimension of manifestation of this kind? How come I become visible to some, and not be seen by the others, as they feel is a different strength to me? I put this question, in one of the chats of NASA years ago, and maybe after 20 years, after 
the Alpha decided I would teach too much and I asked questions which they had no answer for at that time. NASA has shown us that our lives above us as a plasma. We see their shadows. Ask yourself this question. Then you might find an answer in the dimension of physicality. We hear, we see in the news that a man got hit by a cop because both had the dimension of his character. How many times man has taken off the runways? How many times we have shot these rockets and astronauts into space? By the way, one of them now is an Iranian woman. If you heard the White House celebrating the Iranian New Year last week, the first Iranian space heading a, a what I call group to the space lab is an Iranian woman. And it's the thing is, Ayatollah Khamenei kills a woman for covering her head. America to a woman who was born in Iran, give a chance to head a mission to space. Now it comes another point. How many of these rockets this lady was going out with her team would hit the lives which are above us? How many injuries do they create that we never considered? But we know they are there. Sorry, they are not all as fast as the others. We hit them sometimes. Why do they fall? Do they carry an emotion? Because we see their reaction, we see their dimension. So, we haven't understood the love of the Creator for us. The emotion, which is the fundamental point of the reaction of manifestation, we considered how it comes, we considered how it can cover a span, but we haven't considered how the interaction of the fields with that carbon-14 and hydrogen creates emotion which at a given point gives the sign to the plasma of the soul of the man, it's time to manifest yourself. Otherwise you're a loose bullet. Never stop. Now man has to understand the strength of the emotion. This is why in all the teaching from beginning of the time, I always said, what is the emotion? Without emotion, you cannot show your love. Without emotion, you cannot show your anger. Without emotion, you cannot show your suffering. It has to be an interaction with the dimension of the plasma that it gives it dimension to manifest itself in any shape or form. So, emotion has a field of strength. Emotion has a dimension. And man wants to understand that emotion. Man wants and bring in parallel and common denominator between the soul of the man and the soul of physicality of the man, man then become a passenger of the universe without end. Mountain of youth, everlasting life. It's the way the Creator lives, it's the way us as humans have not understood. We call it psychosomatic. I hate my child, I give myself a prostate cancer. Voila! How come you understood the dimension of physicality, but you cannot put it in the dimension of the plasma which created that physicality? Yesterday, when I sat there with our knowledge seeker, I said, it will never be understood by man. I'm there. I feel I'm there, but I'm not going anywhere. First of all, I put a weight on your Backside, I kept you here, I showed you, I covered the dimension to connection to the Earth, the dimension of gravity, to understand your incapability to understand what is involved. I take it out, you see the dimension of, but you have not understood the emotion. You're so hungry to go that you forget the ignition key. How do I manifest myself? 
what is the purpose of my travel? Am I traveling to go to a new place? Not just for me to be there, but teach the others the process. Me is irrelevant. The love of me for man understanding is more important than me. I never fly, because I never understood the emotion. I never understood, I never grasped the fundamental essence of the creation. Otherwise, I'm still another ray, another plasma, traveling the dimension of ignorance. This is one of the points which many of you have to understand to become passengers of the universe, to be able to travel from New York to London. And then, you have not even understood the other part of traveling by the soul, by the emotion of the soul. Then, your lover will feel you in her heart, in his emotion. I feel it in my heart. How many times have you felt, said to yourself, I feel something is wrong, I feel something is going to happen, something, excitement will come, but you don't understand the soul of the emotion of the lover or the thing to happen is already arrived in your heart, in the plasma dimension of the fields, which converts it to physicality. But because you don't have the knowledge, because you don't understand it, you cannot transfer it to your soul, that it becomes the manifestation and dimension in the dimension of the Creator in the dimension of the universe, and then use it. Then, you see a guy getting hit by a car, he stands up and walks, say, how is this possible? Because at that moment, the soul of physicality gave control to the soul, you don't exist in the dimension of physicality, because the love of the Soul of physicality to keep the soul is so strong that it gives everything up that the soul takes over. And then instantaneously, you return, you come back. These things to you were fairy tale, but now look at so many cameras around the world, we show you so many accidents. How come this guy get hit and he walks? Now you understand the process. Now you understand the love the soul of physicality gives to the soul. You take over till we see, till you get me out and then I take over. How come you cannot do this for yourself in the dimension of consciousness of the behavior? Is this another mystery of life which man needs to understand? Trust in the soul? How come at the point of the accident you do it, but you don't want to do it in natural process, all the time. Then, you go to work in New York, you have a tea break in London with your lover, then you'll be in Beijing for lunch, then you go back to Hawaii for a bit of afternoon nap, back to New York tomorrow morning, because there is no time and space. It's you who makes that time, it's you who makes that space for manifestation of physicality, or for the dimension of the soul of the man to take over. Then now you understand why in past three or four months we keep on playing with you. Come, come and play. Come and meet us on the 16th, come and meet us on the 19th, come and see. It's not for you to feel the taste of the food, or sit and see what you can do to a leader, or you have a Tickle with the Creator, is for you to gain confidence. It's for you to understand, I can bring the dimension of emotion. And then with it, I don't get addicted to that emotion. The only emotion man would ever get addicted to, and he cannot get away with it, is like DNA, is the emotion of the love, which is the essence of the devotion of the Creator to Mitra. Don't forget, Mitra could not love Creator if he did not receive the emotion of the love from him. Creator is possess of all, a man converted of some. That if you think your love is so strong between the soul of physicality and the soul of the man, then maybe you understand which one is the Mitra and which one is the Creator. 
And if you understood this sentence, as Muhammad said, bless his name, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. There is no more to teach. But man has not understood this. Man has not come to understand the dimension of emotion. There is no physicality, there is no dimension of existence as a life in the universe, if you carry no emotion. And that emotion has to be transferred in the conduct and the behavior and thoughts. This is the ethos of it. Do good. And the rest of what the Christians call the Three Kings gifts. Because they never understood. The kingdom of the Creator is the behavior in the ethos of his life, which Mitra brought us in the name of the rest. Neat means perfect, correct. Talk, think and do the correct. And this is the path to life. This is a path where you will come from a ray to a field and from the field. And then becomes the dimension of the creation. In a process of life, in a process of the dimension of understanding, man will become to understand the truth. Then man does not need a good fight. Does not need to put one on the cross or shoot at one on the wall. One of the most strangest things for man to understand is the third dimension in the process of the creation, which is emotion, which itself is created from the interaction of the field of the universe. And the universe is you, because without that dimension of the emotion, you don't exist to confirm your existence within yourself. You have to confirm the dimension of existence within yourself first, that you can manifest yourself to the outside. You cannot have a body when the heart doesn't work and it's not there. It's not life, it's just an object, it's just non-existence, because then it becomes nothing. But Deposit in the coffin and you see no sign of it forever. Then it comes a major point for man. How do I go as a ray, become a field and then emotion and dimension of the soul and the physicality? The way you created from the Fields of the plasma of a man, the physicality as the children of Mitra. Now you have to understand how to create those fields that become the emotion of Mitra. And if you crack that, if you understood that, then you have entered the true kingdom of the Creator. Because you will think, do, in a way, talk. The same language. Then you understand. You call it, do good, act good, and the other one, think good. You're a hydrogen, you're a carbon copy, and then you're emotion. And in all three has to be perfect, for a perfect manifestation. Maybe we open the mystery of the creation in the dimension of the word of the man, but in essence of the creator and his creation. Now, for you comes a point. Didn't I give you a three stacker macro? Isn't the three stacker macro? The same as 
want to create the ray, want to create the field, and want by interaction of the two create the emotion, the fields of the existence, the plasma of life. And then if you can interact with it, you understand it's there to serve you with your emotion. Would it be gold? Would it be lover? Would it be a flower? Many times, when I looked at the Maghreb units, I said, these people are just still physical. You put one coil in the wrong direction to the other, you will not see the light. Your Maghreb doesn't work, because the ray is missing. You put wrong direction on the second one, your field is not there. How do you expect to live without carbon? And then most of interaction with each other and the space of their own create a third dimension which is emotion, which gives a life to manifestation of your existence. Now, maybe as knowledge seekers you understand the three kings which they brought the three gifts sits in your man lives and you never understood. You're still looking for saving energy and not paying electric bill. But you actually cut your own power supply from your own creator, from the base on. Because you still look in the dimension of physicality. And as usual, when you play with a child, with a toy, it's just a toy as much as he can understand. When the older one comes, is a rocket, and when the father comes, is a spaceship. But in fact, it's the same toy. Different understanding plays with the same toy in different way, and enjoys its benefit in different way. One dreams of boom boom, and one dreams of deep space, and where it can take me, I become a passenger. But in fact, it's still the same toy, the same look. Man has to understand the knowledge. Man has to understand the process of the creation, that, in a simple way, we explain. Then, I wonder how many of you, will come to understand the next step, in the process of the teaching. then does a collective interaction of the fields creates that dimension of creation. Maybe today's teaching, open your eyes as usual to another dimension of life. Join us in April 29th teaching. In a way, meeting with the addiction of the space, and understanding of our own addiction, in the dimension of physicality. Each one will take from it what they want. And each one will go away with what they think they wanted. But in fact, isn't all the same. Thank you very much for today. But I hope you understood. One of the biggest mysteries of the creation today. But man still needs to understand his own creation and his own conversion from physicality to energy, where the physicality itself is part of that energy spectrum. We we'll go for a small break and we come back and we answer some of the questions which has been a mystery to us, if we have understood today's teaching. Rick, if you'd like to take a break, advertise some more of the man's physicality, and see what will come up with the soul of the man. Okay, Mr. Kesh, thank you. It was a very interesting uh, teaching. Okay, we'll take a short break here for a few minutes, and uh, be back for questions after that.
The new Horizontal Enhancement Spaceship Unit, a space technology that allows you to work with the fields of the universe. Creating a wide range of plasma field interactions and conditions, it allows the body to process itself from any physical or emotional imbalance. Once this balanced condition is achieved, the soul and emotion of the man can follow to find their balance, elevating the whole of the man. The new Horizontal Enhancement Spaceship Unit. Technology of the future through advanced plasma knowledge. The Universal Body Enhancement Spaceship Unit. The very first new evolutionary spaceship technology has been rolled out for mass production. Embedding the essence of the new GANS plasma science and technology, it uses collective plasma field technology for changing and enhancing the environment of the body of the man. This new plasma enhancement changes the environment of the body to allow it to return to its natural, balanced, energetic condition, as in the womb of the mother, allowing every cell in the body of the man to find its natural, original field strength balance. The shape and field distribution in this new space plasma technology replicates the inner structure of the universe and replicates the balanced fields from which the man was created at the point of inception in the womb of the mother, not only receiving balance in the physical, but also in the emotional sense too. This new spaceship technology can be within the reach of every man today and can be ordered by medical practitioners, sports specialists and healthcare centers. The Universal Enhancement Spaceship Unit, the future you have been waiting for is here. The revolutionary new Flight Enhancement Spaceship Unit is due to be launched in June 2022 and in the same year is expected to fly passengers into space, to the moon and beyond for a day or even several days at a time. There is no need for the Flight Enhancement Spaceship Unit to carry food or medicine as it is equipped with the latest space technology for transportation, transmutation and deep space operation. This extraordinary breakthrough technology ushers in a new era of travel without the need of fuel, food or medicine, even during the longest excursions into deep space. Each spaceship unit has a four passenger capacity for long or short duration flights and has the capability to travel between cities on Earth in a matter of seconds to minutes, depending on the distance and speed. This ability to traverse massive distance in such incredibly short time is not just a breakthrough for human transport, it also completely revolutionizes the transportation of goods and cargo and will rapidly overcome the need for one of our most polluting practices, namely marine shipping, as it finally breaks us free not only from the combustion of heavy diesel, but from the combustion of any fuel for propulsion in the future. The Flight Enhancement Spaceship Unit, a new paradigm in space travel, space medicine and space technology. Okay, welcome back everyone to the 479th Knowledge Seekers Workshop here on Thursday, March 30th, 2023. 
Well, Mr. Kesh, how would you like to proceed uh, in the second half of the show here? Um, we would like to introduce something new to knowledge seekers, which has been happening in the background, and the Kesh Foundation has been privileged to it. But we think it's the right time to come to public for you to understand so, uh, how some of your knowledge seekers work and how you participate and support other knowledge seekers without them knowing or they knowing. Keshe Foundation receives a lot of different ways to support other knowledge seekers or to bring things that others can enjoy. And we usually find a place, we find people, we get people, for example, in some of the uh, meetings we had in past few weeks or in the conferences, one knowledge seeker sponsors or buys a ticket and says, give it to whoever likes and cannot afford it. I paid for two. We have knowledge seekers who have been supporting the wellness this way. I don't have a cancer, but I don't want somebody else to have a cancer, or he has a cancer, can be helped. And we give this to our doctors, and we provide the facility in different ways, and they look into it. We receive the donation for four Parkinson cases, from one knowledge seekers. We thank him and for his soul, and the way he supported. And for example, very recently one of our knowledge seekers, who entered for a, a specific way with the doctors, he saw it, that there is nothing at this moment can be done. He said, use it for another knowledge seeker if they need me. So we find, we allocate, we give it as a gift, as a support. But there is other ways that knowledge seekers support or give things to the foundation to use. We don't accept properties, we don't accept land, we don't live in office, so many lands over the years and God knows buildings. It's nothing to do with us. We have nothing to do with that. Not even when I tell them I'm not interested, Mr. the cash, I'm giving you 700,000 square meters of the prime property. What am I going to do with it? It becomes another burden to be attached to this planet. But sometimes we get things that other knowledge seekers can use. We bring this out for you to see, and maybe you become to understand you can do for the others. We have a knowledge seeker who has paid for specific items to the foundation and he has asked us, give it to those who need. Rick, can you put a list up? I think you've been received, received it from the webmaster. These items have been paid for by another knowledge seeker and is there for you knowledge seekers, if you wanted, you could not afford it. But it's not just there because it's there, I grab it. For you to, what I call, to enjoy. Can you share that screen with us, Rick? Yes. Yes, it's coming here, just one second. Yeah. It is donation to the foundation. And if you think, you know someone who can benefit by it, they'll be too shy to ask for it. Or it's something you wanted, you couldn't afford, or it's something you wanted, but it wasn't the possibility to get it. These items have been fully paid by, as a donation, by Knowledge Seekers to the Foundation. Instead of us choosing, we leave it to you to choose. You can even choose and make a donation you, you could afford, again, back goes to the foundation. But we have fully received the funding for this. We are not looking for money for it. If you think you can use them, or somebody can use them, the usual passage in the Keshe Foundation, this is going to take a lot of our time, but it starts a new cycle that we can put in. You don't take anything with you when your soul travels but you can create a condition for a soul to travel in comfort, as I always call it. So, send the usual place, health, at the usual place which we put, 
and say, this item I would like to, I'm prepared to pay for a postage and package already paid. All we need to, is to send it. If some cases, postage needed, we tell you, can you pay for the postage? So, it's a donation by a Keshe Foundation knowledge seeker, and we thank him for his generosity. And it's there for you if you need it. Look at the item, and it says what it is. Would you like to read it? Rick, that what is available, and who might want to have it, it would be a pleasure to let you receive it, to enjoy it. Would you like to go ahead, please? Okay. So the first item is an, one item of enhanced tabletop CO2 capturing unit, that is CO2 complete system. This is about 1,500 euro, I think. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, second item is one of GAN's paint enhancement, energizer, red. Third item is two of the Keshe GAN's educational and travel kit, complete uh, for GAN's uh, set. Fourth item is one of the Keshe GAN's environment balancer, set of four pieces with the uh, Shuko plug. Uh, next item is one of the GAN's enhancement plant care, the natural pest remover, one piece. Next item is one of the GAN's enhancement plant care, natural fertilizer, one piece. I don't know. Item number seven here is one of the GANS Paint Enhancement Environmental White. Next item is a GANS Wrist Gel Pack Certified. And after that, a Keshe GANS Pants Long in Medium. And then a Keshe GANS Pants Long in Extra Extra Large. Uh, next item would be five of the Kesh Gans household reactor, one piece each. And the last item is one of the Kesh plasma fields absorption butterfly. Smaller size. Yeah. So this is what's available. If you wanted it, you could not afford it. You know, somebody will be good for school education or somewhere, just send us to the same uh, address as usual, and it'll be done if you receive so many of it, we'll ask you, we have received, which one of you discuss with each other, more important to go to. So, this is one of them. The other one we have is, as you know, in the Keshe Foundation, in the exhibitions you come, there are a number of paintings, and they've been on sale on the Keshe Foundation website. We have added four new sets from the Austrian um, painter. The Austrian painter um, four sets arrived this week, and they go as a normal sale, as is priced, and um, they are made by the Ganses, which the Keshe Foundation manufacturing, all of lab people have decided what they want it to be for what, and the painter has painted it. And these are ganses which are produced by the Foundation, and uh, as per a specific use, and they're beautifully done, as you can see. These have just been added, like the same, as a lot of you be waiting for the pressure cup, and uh, what I call, the sugar cup, they have arrived, so they're part of the stock, plus these are new. But, we 
had, as you know, eight sets of painting by Italian artists, which some of you bought some of her work and is done. And these eight sets has been donated by the artist to the foundation. We can keep it there and wait a year, two years, whatever, to be uh, sold and the funds to go to the foundation. Or what the foundation has decided to do, and we have informed the artist, is these eight paintings, they're all valued around about 3,000 a pair because they have to be facing each other, or maybe two of you decide, one buys one of them in Australia, and another one buys in Canada to cover the field, as you know, the magnetic field, plasmatic field, cover the distance between the two. These are the matching uh, paintings. These are gone on offer. You can make an offer, and the foundation decides, who receives, maybe receive two offers from two people, say, would you like one each? And we go for the soul of knowledge seekers. Don't make us a ridiculous price of five euro or hundred euro, whatever. But what do you think these paintings will bring you and give to someone, give it to university, to a college at home, to your son, to your daughter? Make an offer to the foundation. You have to pay them for postage and packaging, and you will receive it. These eight set of paintings are there from today, open to offers. You might want it, but you can't afford 3,000. You see a value in it, in any shape or form, like the other Nigel scale, you might buy all the eight and say donate it to her once, and then we come back to says that they've been paid for. So if you want or are paid for two, I want one. Let somebody else knowledge seekers have the other one. Create a love between the two. Leave that to you. So eight set of paintings, which is with the foundation for about two or three months, has been donated to the foundation, and instead of sitting on it, we're sharing it with you because. The fields of the love and the care is being painted for has to be shared and not to be kept. And so it's there for you. If you see, have a connection, you like to feel it, make an offer through the same channel. Rick, if you can put the link up and read it, because some of the people just listen to these teachings on recording uh, to the foundation and you will receive it. As you know. We received a donation, a massive donation of support in a way, uh, from um, the test. Yes, it's called um, for 100 cases of wellness for our doctors at the rate of 3,000 euro. The rest is covered irrespective of condition, except certain condition which our doctors will not do, is like cancer assignments, Parkinson uh, and MS are not covered under this. Uh, for any diseases, any condition which our doctors can use in wellness, you can apply for. And looking at the condition, some people come with, I have this, this, this. It's no good. Something is simple, you know, something is singular, not the simple, that we, it can be handled and concentrated on for a six weeks session maximum for the to, to see the change and the results that we collect the data. We are covered on the other side. The balance is with you. And if you want to join, go as usual, the health at uh, what do you call uh, we put it up last week, the spaceship, the spaceship institute, yes, dot org. Yeah. Right to us, we received a number of applications, people requested, some of them, it's, uh, it was sent to me, I looked at this, absolutely. I have every disease on the planet, I would like to use the 3000, sorry. We're here to get 10 cases, 
not one man with 10 diseases, which is all irrelevant from I had a car accident to my toe broke today, I have a plant, heart transplant and the rest. It doesn't work. Just be a little bit of common sense allows us to help a lot. So, send your request to health and we send it to the doctors and the condition application will be considered and the fee is, don't come to us. We had a few cases I heard, I've seen this week, people come in, I don't have the 3,000, can you even give me that? It doesn't gonna work. If you receive funding for certain things, we can come. But, uh, some people take it to the point of um, not acceptable, what I call, understanding of the system for our doctors. They paid the time to it, they spent a lot of, it needs, and now we're expanding the doctors. All these doctors have to uh, compensate for the effort and the time they put in, plus cover all the expenses of the, the other things which is in the background with it. So, we have reached, we have accepted uh, to uh, the understanding that we do everything the correct way, and we understand we, we do it the way it has to be done. And a number of people have already uh, started this process of the uh, requested last week and started the post of 3000 for given the specific conditions they have for wellness with our doctors. These are all done by the doctors and not by the Cash Foundation, especially this week we handed over everything to the doctors. It took us time to set up to refine the system and everything and as of last Tuesday uh, everything now is done by um, doctors through their operation and more doctors will be added to this structure as all the, what I call, uh, the um, uh, fine-tuning, tuning, everything is completed, that they don't have a problem. The beauty with this is some of the doctors who join us is, you don't need to move from your surgery, you don't need to move even from your bedroom. Uh, everything done is remote control by you through the operation in one of the places wherever the system are sitting, and we've seen the results. And <coughs> yesterday, as we handed over everything else, some of the people who went through the process um, with the doctors, the, doc with the doctor said that a child who was heavily involved in ADHD, in a matter of eight weeks, ten weeks, he has become a brilliant child. My family has a new child totally unbelievable, and the child wanted to say goodbye. That, because it was a final session, and his life has changed. And this is the beauty with the wellness system, that the Keshe Foundation, we changed a life at the age of 10 with our doctors. Now is a life, 10 years, 30, 40, 50 years of life of happiness and joy, instead of suffering. And it's the purpose of the new technology, to bring peace and comfort. And as we see more and more, those who join us for these programs, for our knowledge to extend, while they benefit with the beauty of the knowledge, we see the, the, what we call the fruits of our work. People with the conditions they could never imagine can be changed, changing. People with accidents, with depression, with all sorts of things, who come to us, long-term, short-term commitment. We can't solve everything, but we are learning. We have a knowledge of Keshe's with us now. Ben and I, for years, and two or three sessions, the suffering is gone. It's so easy to do. The new technology is relevant. One is on the other side of the planet, one is on Mars, one is on the another solar system. Is a human, we have the knowledge, we have the access to what we call common denominator of the life, why not? So, if you are, or you want to test, so we bring something new to the knowledge of our doctors, go again to the health at the Space Institute, I want, I have this condition, please sort out your 3,000 finances before you come to us, because it's no use taking our time, says, I'm going to find now. This takes a lot of time of our work, and our systems, and our doctors, and it's not needed. Um, so, there's still number of the spaces available for the, uh, the 100 cases, and then we go to see what happened with the next stage of the development. I thank all those who made the donations, 
in different ways for others to enjoy and be there and to be with it. Are there any questions? Okay, very good, uh, Mr. Kesh. Uh, I'll remind your attendees here that you can put up their virtual hands. If you have any questions, especially re uh, referring to the teaching or anything Mr. Kesh just said, then that would be best to start with. Otherwise, we do have some questions in the Q&A. I don't see any hands up yet from our participants. So let's uh, dive into a question in the Q&A from Carlos from Brazil. Good morning, Mr. Kesh and all seekers of knowledge. In Barasil, in the last 20 years, more than 3,000 tons of mercury were dumped into the Amazon rivers, carried out by man's greed and the illegal gold mining. A biochemical time bomb heralded, as was the mercury poison disaster in the city of Minamata in Japan. A tragedy announced in the Amazon to nature, indigenous peoples and peoples of the northern region of Brazil victims of mercury contamination. Just like the Keshe Foundation project with plasma technology in the decontamination of Fukushima in Japan, can we direct a project to the Brazilian government for the decontamination of these rivers in these regions of Brazil through plasma technology? We appreciate your guidance. We are aware of this, and uh, we've been aware of this for a long, long time. Long even before the Cash Foundation was established. In 1990s, I was taken by the Russian and Kazakhstan uh, leadership at that time, President Zabayev, um, to look at the lake, uh, and how to we can change the contamination of this lake with nuclear material. In those days, Russians had no regulation and they dumped all the nuclear waste into one lake. And it's actually as, as good as walking into a nuclear reactor waste pool. And I was taken there by the order of the President in the 1990s to look to find a solution for cleaning up this mess, this lake. And at that time I gave a proposal to both the, uh, that time was Yeltsin, and that time was President Nazarbayev. How we can decontaminate this, uh, this lake from nuclear radiation. Exactly what we did in Fukushima. Fukushima wasn't there something we were going to do. This was proposed years before even the Keshe Foundation was established. And it's the same, not only with Amazon, with the other places. The way I see it in my um, future work and collaboration with the Chinese government, uh, these things need a governmental support, governmental understanding and intervention. And we see this as part of the possible joint collaboration between Keshe Foundation and the Chinese authorities in the coming months and years. You got to understand, in Brazil, the government is not interested in anything which is beneficial to its citizens unless it's paid something in the back pocket of your leaderships. Be the governor, be the district governor, be it God knows everybody up the ladder. They only talk to you when there is something in it in their pocket. Otherwise, not interested. And indigenous lives is irrelevant. Um, the contamination has to be done on a scale which is large enough 
am profitable enough to do it. One of the reasons when you speak about the Fukushima was interesting and was taken up by the Japanese government and very soon came as part of the share of a company in America, when the people who were inside the Keshe Foundation actually working with the Americans as a friend of the Keshe Foundation in the background, uh, took the technology to California and then from there made it into share in a company, fake patent, and then became part of the assets of the Japanese and there as Americans, where we converted the radiation into white dust gold, and then they start discrediting it because it was not to be coming out. I'm saying now here we had nothing about it in Fukushima. The cleaning up this is not only Amazon, there are other places with worse condition than this, has to come with the collaboration of the new collaboration between the Chinese Keshe Foundation, the Chinese government, and the Keshe Foundation worldwide. What we call science in exchange for peace is it needs billions, otherwise, you're still doing a what you call a cop in the ocean job. And has to come as a process of peace, a process of gift in a way, but in a way it's not a gift. We can do a lot of conversion into a lot of other things, the Mercury, useful for both the nation and even indigenous can benefit by it. And this process uh, has been tried and it works very well, if it's given in a way that indigenous people Instead of fishing fish and not having any fish, now they can use the condition to clean up, have a living, make a good life, and then do the fishing. Uh, we look at this in our future talks on work with the Chinese government, and then well, I think it is resolvable. It's not I think, I know it's resolvable, but it needs huge financing. And somebody in there that says we do it. And with a new uh, policy, and Brazil being part of the BRIC um, with the Chinese government, it is a doable. And it's something I'm sure the Chinese government will look at it February in science and technology exchange for peace. Peace does not mean guns and bullets, peace means peace of mind for the citizens, be it the pollution be it environmental, be it a natural disaster. And the governments are there to do. We made a direct uh, talk with the Turkish president in the past few weeks, how we can help, and with his people close to him, uh, with the earthquake disaster. And the first question was asked, how much is in it for us? Otherwise, it's no use even getting talking to you, Mr. Keshe. People are dying, and others are lying in their pocket. And this has to come from a correct government, like President Xi's, and the, what we call the Silk Road, One Road, uh, One Belt, has to become One Piece Science, One Piece Technology, and the support of the government to do these things that can be done. It's not just we, the same problem sits in China, the same problem sits in Africa and everywhere else. It's how we change the technology, to become a financial resources. And what the advancement in technology can bring that pleasure to do it. And I've seen this many times with the Chinese government, even though it always is to the benefit of the Chinese nation, but it brings a lot of changes. And it's not the first time Chinese have been involved in these things. Uh, they go back years before even you heard about the uh, Chinese participation in cleaning up the environment but in a way, financially beneficial to the, what do you call it, to the Chinese nation assets, or what do you call it, interest. I saw this in 1990s, long before one of one belt came in, where the Chinese in one of the big African nations, uh, the uh, French and the British, dug a mine, open mine, that created the, they took whatever copper they could take from a mine, uh, as long as it was profitable, and then they flooded it. And it became a huge lake, it was a massive lake in the country, and um, 
the price of the copper went from two hundred, three, four hundred a dollar a ton to nearly four or five thousand dollars. It took a different shape, but it was a lake fork. The Chinese came in, made an agreement with the government. They made, if I'm correct, a few hundred uh, schools. They made a few hundred hospitals. Uh, they built so many kilometers of the high quality motorway and other things. They emptied the lake totally and they start taking what the British and the French left behind was not worth taking to a very profitable copper mine. And they created a lot of jobs and part of this agreement was for every one Chinese expert for locals will be employed and be taught how to carry on doing it. But the mine, the area has been leased for long term to the Chinese. So in a way, Chinese didn't need to bring people to work. They could use, and they were paid fair wages. This was the biggest strange thing that the British didn't like. That the Chinese start paying fair wages in Africa. They're not living in poverty and the villages go around it. I went to this lake and this area with the Minister of Transport who was a close friend at that time. We were on the Sunday lunch with his wife was running my offices. Said, Behram, I'm going to show you how Chinese are winning in Africa. And now this is possible. Uh, that uh, it has to be something, not just cleaning the mercury, but uh, it has to be that is beneficial to the locals in cleaning up the mercury. Don't forget, you talk about the mercury in the rivers which has come in. Some of these villages, people, were the ones who went, created the mine and used the mercury to clean up, to get the gold out. They never counted down the road, it's them and their tribe will be affected by it. I've seen this one in Congo, where people go into the mountains, wash and try to find diamonds and they create mayhem for the others, but at the end of the bottom line, some of the villages at the bottom which gets affected with all these, what I call, hand diggings, and they get washed out and then they blame themselves for themselves trying to find diamonds. So there is a solution, yes, but it has to come from the correct government with the correct financing, not with the pockets and then wash. And we'll see in the future, there is a bigger plan than these things. Any other question? Okay, very good. Um, okay, we have several more questions in the Q&A. Let's go over to the YouTube first from, the name is Yogi Nature Wineries Foodie Fun Times. Okay, the question is, Mr. Kesh, does the soul of the man travel outside of the universe when traveling to another place? It can, it does. How do you think the other solar systems and galaxies created in other universes? It's cultural exchange, you call it. If you can, create the field forces of the Earth, which matches in a given position and dimension of the universe, you get attracted with your preset to go there. Of course. Okay, and maybe... A Earth is a nursery of souls, and a florist does not care if his flower goes to China, to Holland, or to Africa. It likes to show its beauty and what it can do. Close next. Okay, another similar question on traveling, uh, in a way. From Alexandra, Brazil. Good morning, Mr. Kesh. See if my line of thinking proceeds according to what you said, um, which is, quote, all teachings are to make us 
become part of the universal community and for man to leave the village of earth, to no longer be shackled with the repetition of certain actions, unquote. Could, the, could we consider being born and disincarnated and born again and so on as an addiction? And as dimension of the emotion of the creation, yes. But you're not incarnated as a dog or a cat. Any other question? Okay, question from uh, Malcolm. <clears throat> says, uh, Mr. Mr. Cash, regarding animals and birds, etc., as messengers, my dog passed three months ago when I had her at the vets uh, two days before she journeyed. I saw a luminous blue ring around her nose. Was she showing me her soul, telling me she was leaving? And do they foresee their death? Secondly, can the soul reincarnate in an existing dog that is already a year old, defying time? I also experienced what you mentioned about your beautiful mother regarding birds as messengers on two occasions with loved ones journeying. Thanks very much, Malcolm. Uh, we always, in so many ways, know of the journey. And some of us are receptive to understand who goes through and who will go through it. And maybe a light on the nose of the, the animal has been, as the soul has expanded and created a field of that dimension and position that you can see. And yes, it's quite possible. It's, is we, we would like to think of it as possibility. Do they tell us? Yes, of course they do. But, the same as I said, many times, we can accept souls, but it has to be accepted by the soul itself, to accept the soul. And otherwise, it's a mayhem. And there are technologies and knowledges which can be used to accommodate or to move a soul which is not wanted. Um, if one soul goes in the soul of another animal uh, and it's not welcome, he has to find a new place. Is a gravitational magnetic position, or you can create another condition to be fair, role for that what I call invasion to be finding its own new place. But it needs a lot of understanding and it needs a lot of collaboration from the what I call resident soul. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay, we have uh, two questions that are similar, so perhaps we can combine them. From Cristiano, uh, who says, Mr. Keshe, in the 168th Knowledge Seekers Workshop and the 169th, you deepen the knowledge about amino acids, showing beautiful images made available by Dr. Kloss. And you explain about the difference of field, uh, difference of strength fields using different types of salt. And you talk about this difference of strength fields that man needs to understand to manifest in the universe. Then you speak about the change in skin and eye color of the beautiful people, schizophrenic people, according to the soul that is present in the conversation and that they absorb different field strengths and emotions. So uh, his question is, could you expand a little more on this knowledge? 
And Jared's question in the YouTube was, hi, Mr. Kesh, how to understand strength deeply? Um, we create manifestation according to the serenity. But you have to understand man uses different words for the same thing. You call it serenity, you call it gravity, you call it inertia, but in essence is the strength of absorption that becomes balanced with its environmental absorption that leads to manifestation. So, when we manifest in an environment, the salinity decides what we are manifested in the form and the shape in that gravitational magnetic field. If you made cancers, Sometimes you followed the instruction to the point, and sometimes something didn't work, but they actually working out because you cannot see it, but it's in a different way. Uh, you don't use the right salinity or the right wire. So it doesn't work. I cannot make anything. At the moment, we have this problem with a lot of knowledge seekers who are trying to make these kits, and they say they cannot produce. And now we have to change the plate. We do this, we do that. But the fact is, for manifestation of the fields, you have two conditions. One is local, and one is environmental. A lot of you have ganses in the house, and you produce beautiful CO2 at the beginning, and then it goes to nothing, because you know what you did? You took the ganses out, and you put it in the jar, you took it out, you put it in the cup, you put it in the cup, you put it in somewhere else, you tried it, but, hello, the distance between where you're trying to produce the new ganses and the ones you made before is a few centimeter, a few meter, and CO2 balance in the room is constant, is changed. Now it's not any more hungry, so you cannot see production. Because there's nothing in the environment to create a condition of change. Even you did the same copper plates, you did the same nano coating, you use the same salt, but now change your salinity a little bit or add uh, alkalineness to it a little bit and say, oh, it's not working. So you have to consider in every work two things one local and one environmental. And when you consider this, then you become good in producing things. Otherwise, you work in a small kitchen, you can't have all the herbs and all the vegetables in that kitchen, it doesn't have the space. But you put one material which has a very strong odor, you cannot smell the others. When you go in, you only smell that thing in the kitchen, the smell of this, because I have a small pack of it. So, and it's not just that it's in a small pack, but it's what creates an environmental condition too. And this is what you, as knowledge seekers, have to understand. Would your soul manifest itself in the dimension of its at any given point in the universe? If the gravitational field is strength in that position, or the, what we call salinity is of the right order, yes, you see the gases, yes, you see your soul as another creation. You got to take the knowledge step further. Creation of hundreds of millions and billions of stars in one galaxy is no different than creation of hundreds of millions of the plasmas in your GANS box. Ask yourself, what feel the strength 
the creator has used that so much gases as the stars have created in this box of the what we call galaxy that's all a galaxy is a box without a wall but containing a specific gravitational magnetic field or salinity that others can match and manifest themselves in a given point, time, straight and position. So, we understand very easily the implication of the question and the application of it. If you create, which we start showing and our process is going on to be shown, if you take somebody's kidneys out or somebody born with one kidney, you can create the right Salinity feel the strength. The second kidney with all its collection will manifest itself in the body of the man. You don't need a transplant. But man's knowledge is not there yet. Any other question? Uh, yes, from uh, in the uh, YouTube, from I am. Good day, Mr. Kesh. Would it be easier to understand the workings of the universe and the soul if we were able to get out of our bodies and experience it? Is this the purpose of the enhancement unit? Yes, and yes, and yes. Next question. Okay. Um, we're running through these questions pretty quick here. Mr. Oh, we have that? one more. One, only, only one more open here, which is uh, from uh, Kurt from Germany. And the translation is, hello, Mr. Kesh, and to all. Can you update on the gas electric unit and the delivery of that? Thanks, and thanks to all of you. As we said, we we'll, should be able online to deliver in the second quarter. We had a lot of, as usual, developments and productions and other things. The gas production energy, we've done the principal process and then we found the easier way to do it and getting it done but in the second quarter we should be able to deliver it and um, it's not it's been made much simpler and uh, between our own knowledge seekers who work on it they have not seen how easily it's become the Production of these things, it does not take long to do, once our team complete the thing and then package. It's like the, what you call, the plasma home enhancement unit, the small ones, the grey boxes. We are testing and finding things out and it goes through the checking with, what you call, for certification. They come out and the whole process will be like this. The first unit to be submitted for production of the gas and the what you call conversion of production of electricity. Uh, we we produce it now. It's just in a way completing the cycle of the production. Producing the gas gas now is as easy as drinking water for the Keshe Foundation people. It's just how to put it in the right order and other things to control it and the rest of it will be the next couple of months. Um, speaking of uh, drinking water, Mr. Cash, um, do you think that, that people should be experimenting with um, cups and so on that uh, are for plasmatic feeding 
during this time when there is some experiments on your at your end going on with plasmatic feeding and whatnot. They can do whatever they people they do. Interfere or or have any cross no, interference really. there. Okay. No, really, you should not do because it's you just create on the condition. The in the in the coming time, uh, in our work with where we will concentrate to develop, we <laughs> will provide a technology for creating water, rain. But one of my biggest fear has been once you introduce this technology, Knowing the greed of the man, they will start using it in deserts. They start using it anywhere just to create a rain, and this will bring unbalance to the natural life of this planet. Creating a, a condition to rain for days in an environment using the plasma technology. It's just easier to drink in the water. But um, what I don't like to do to introduce technologies like this is the use will to bring massive changes very short time. So water production is not a problem. Abuse of it is my biggest concern. Unless we deliver what we did in the past couple of weeks with uh, plasma, we showed how you can satisfy and receive water as saliva, you, you had the feelings, most of you, then yes, it'll come worth doing it and releasing the new technologies to coincide and be part of this development. That um, creation of the water, or in the case of the uh, uh, feeding process, the creation of the saliva, in the, the water of the mouth, or water of the body in a way, um, was an interesting topic in the Keshe Plasma Reactor Group. I wonder if you can talk about that a bit, and especially in relation to the comment you made today called the uh, quote would be the super highway of the hydrogen and we know that you know saliva or water or that gans of water is a hydrogen oxygen mix supposedly and we know that there's hydrogen in space you said that many almost a decade ago or probably over a decade ago now about the hydrogen atom in space, uh, taking it, the fields of it um, exist out to you know maybe a, a meter around that uh, that uh, single atom, and so because there's more than one atom of hydrogen in in each cubic meter of space, then in effect all the hydrogen atoms are in communication with each other they're all rubbing shoulders you could say so it's same thing in our uh, saliva in the mouth we have the h2o and it's part of the information super highway of the uh, what's called the largest organ of the body the interstitial fluid of the body so it seems like we have this super highway both inside of us and in space. And I'm wondering if you can sort of fill in the blanks there a bit, or am I stretching things too far? You're stretching it too far, but not too far is near enough. Uh, you got to understand saliva or water, it's a tool, it's not the end. So you decide 
how this tool will manifest itself. As the water, as the saliva, as the field, which manifests themselves in a condition that allows other plasmas to float within it. We call it liquid. So we decide, or subconsciously our body decides, the salinity and whatever we need and what it creates for us. This experience, you most of it has happened with a lot of you. You're walking with your friends and family, all they say, oh, we want a McDonald's, we want to go and have a McDonald's, and you have no desire for it. But they're killing themselves to go in. And say, okay, I'll come in, we, we get, we'll have a McDonald's. But the fact is, one of the people with you has a gravitational magnetic field matching with the outer emotion level of what's in the shop. And you just are a slave to it, and you just walk. I, I don't know why I'm here. We create a salinity, gravitational field strength, which matches to near enough to somebody near enough to love, or somebody or ourselves at the same time feel the same. Oh, I wanted to ask you to go for that. Oh, I was thinking, say, I want to go there. So I was thinking to go there. So. so Hunger brings a specific common denominator emotion, and then by going to the give the physicality, you and your friend. We look at the science of living in a different angle than the man does, and that's why it looks so strange. Any other question? Uh, one question from Win 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 Tang in the uh, YouTube: the near-death experience. What is not correct in this experience of people, and different with the Keshe unit? <laughs> Big difference. We don't bring you near death. We bring you to near life. And. Uh, uh, the life in is in the universe, are connected to the physicality in the dimension of the soul of physical. Near death uh, experience is just that you go through the whole process, but uh, the last leg pulls you back with what the body has not decided for you to go. Any other question? I like that uh, term, <laughs> near life experience. And uh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I don't see any Fantastic. standing questions. This is amazing. And no hands have jumped up, not even jump in Jalal. <laughs> so I'm not sure what to say, Mr. Gersh. Oh, that's good. We can call it the early day. And you, uh, you even answered my question, so I guess you're really <laughs> off the hook today. That's good. Uh, we don't have to be three, four, or five hours or whatever. Um, we try to uh, complete the process of teaching now that we have opened a new Pandora box for you, what we call the emotion. And the essence of the emotion within the dimension of the universal fields. And then we'll see how man can benefit by this, that he guarantees his return to the point source of the life, where the original soul was created. Thank you very much today, and hopefully we we'll see you next week. And please, please, let us know if you need any of the what do you call equipment clearly and how many of them and whatever and about uh, what we call the 100 cases which are there if you have any kind of wellness for our doctors to look into. Thank you very much Rick. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Very good Mr. Kesh. Thank you. I see Brett has a hand up here, but I think it's kind of uh, over the deadline now. 
So um, we'll go out here and um, see our next public teaching workshop will be well into April, April 4th with the One Nation, One Planet, One Race for World Peace and Justice. And that starts at uh, 4 p.m. Central European Summer Time. And people are welcome to be with members of the Universal Council in that uh, workshop. Okay, uh, I'm going to wrap up now. This is the 479th Knowledge Seekers Workshop for Thursday, March 30th, 2023. And uh, we'll go out with the Flight Enhancement Spaceship Unit music version this time. And uh, thank you everyone for attending today's workshop and uh, we'll see you in the next public workshop, if not before then. Bye for now.